Let's start with the simpler cases and work our way towards the dirtiest animals on the list. Number 10. Koalas. Yeah, you probably already know this first one. But hey, we gotta start somewhere, right? Now picture this. You're a koala, hanging out in a tree, and you spot a potential mate. You give them an irresistible koala wink. But little do you know, you might be getting more than you bargained for. Because around 50 to 90% of koalas have chlamydia. It's a bacteria that causes serious problems. Think of it like an uninvited relative crashing your party. Only this one brings burning sensations, pain, and a whole lot of hassle down there, instead of awkward family stories. For humans, it's bad news. It can feel like a fire down below, along with pain and a bunch of other not-so-fun stuff. Scientists trying to save the koalas have come up with a rather unique solution, and it's as Australian as it gets. Eucalyptus-flavored chlamydia vaccines. So next time you see a koala, just remember, he might be dealing with a bit of a burn down there. Number 9. Fruit flies. There's a virus that infects these flies, scientifically known as the Drosophila melanogaster sigma virus. It does something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It makes infected male flies irresistible to the ladies. Yeah, you heard that right. This virus is like the ultimate wingman for male fruit flies. Imagine that. A bug with more game than your average online dating guru. But while these male flies are living it up, there's a big catch. The virus actually shortens their lifespan. Yep, these little guys don't get to enjoy their newfound popularity for long. But why would a virus do this? Well, it's all part of the virus's evil master plan. By making the host more attractive, the virus gets more chances to jump to new hosts during their fly love sessions. Now, here's the not-so-fun part for the female flies. This virus doesn't really do them any favors. It focuses all its energy on making the males look like the Brad Pitts of the bug world. The females, on the other hand, just get the short end of the stick with a shorter lifespan and none of the perks. Number 8. Rabbits. Yeah. Those cuddly creatures aren't just good at multiplying themselves, they're also champions at sharing something a bit less adorable. Rabbits have been hit hard by a virus called myxomatosis. This nasty virus was originally hanging out in South America, minding its own business, infecting some local rabbit species. But humans, being humans, decided to play Mother Nature. Back in the 1950s, Australia and Europe had a rabbit problem, so some genius thought, hey, let's bring myxomatosis to Europe and Australia. And boy, did it spread like wildfire. The thing about myxomatosis is it's brutal. This virus can cause swollen eyelids, ears, and lips, making our fluffy friends look like they've gone 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. It often leads to the rabbits becoming unalived, but nature has its surprises, and some rabbit species are now resisting the virus. Number 7. Baboons. Baboons are well known for their complex social lives and, let's be honest, their unique appearance. But they also have a little-known health issue. They're carriers of herpes. Now, herpes is mostly a chill guest in baboons. They carry it without much fuss. But here's where it gets serious. If it jumps to humans, the story changes. For us, it's bad news. Really bad. Now, don't panic. It's not like every baboon is a walking health hazard for humans. These cases are rare. But when they do happen, it's usually due to bites or scratches from infected baboons. So next time you see a baboon, remember to maintain a healthy distance. Number 6. The Tasmanian Devil Tasmanian devils, as you might guess, are native to Tasmania, an island state of Australia. Since the mid-90s, they've been facing a unique problem. It's called Devil Facial Tumor Disease, or DFTD for short. Now, DFTD isn't your run-of-the-mill STD. It's a contagious cancer. Usually cancer isn't something you pass around like a cold, but DFTD didn't get the memo. It spreads when these little devils bite each other which is pretty much their way of saying I like you during dinner dates. The first unfortunate devil with a face only a mother could love was spotted back in 1996. Since then, it's been a downhill journey for these guys. This disease slaps big, ugly tumors all over their faces and mouths, making eating a challenge. Imagine trying to chow down with a bunch of balloons stuck in your mouth. Not exactly a party, right? What's fascinating, and a bit horrifying, is how this disease spreads. When these devils bite each other, they actually transfer living cancer cells. These cells are ninja-level sneaky, so the devil's immune system doesn't even flag these cells as invaders. They just move in, unpack, and multiply like they own the place. The impact? Huge. We're talking a drop of over 80% in some areas. These little devils are now on the endangered list, and DFTD is the grim reaper behind it. So, next time you're feeling down about your dating life, just remember, 
at least you're not a Tasmanian devil with a contagious face tumor. Number 5. Chimpanzees. We share about 98% of our DNA with these guys, and it turns out, we're not just alike in our love for bananas. These clever creatures can catch a bunch of different STDs. Now, here's the part that'll blow your mind. Chimps are into DIY healthcare. Scientists have caught these guys in the act of self-medication. They're picking and munching on plants with medicinal powers. And guess what? Some of these plants are the same ones we use for their medicinal benefits. And it's not a one-chimp show, either. Across different chimp tribes, they've been seen doing the same thing. It's like they have their own version of WebMD, sharing health tips and tricks. This self-medication isn't limited to just eating plants, either. We think they might be rubbing certain plants on their bodies, too. That's right. These guys have basically invented their own version of cream for STD rashes. Genius, right? So, next time you're feeling a bit rough, maybe ask a chimp for some health tips. Number 4. Bats. Let's talk about bat white nose syndrome. And no, it's not some weird bat cocaine party. It's way weirder. So, white nose syndrome isn't technically an STD, but it spreads in a way that might make you think of one. It's a fungus. And it has a passion for cold, dark places, which makes bat caves the perfect party spot. While these little guys are trying to sleep through the winter, the fungus grows on their noses, wings, and ears. It irritates them, waking them up from their peaceful hibernation. Imagine being tickled awake in the middle of a deep sleep. Not fun, right? For bats, it's like their alarm clock is blaring at 3 a.m., but they can't find the snooze button. The result? They end up burning through their fat reserves faster than a gamer through a bag of chips. So, they often starve before winter ends. Major bummer. Now, you might be thinking, why are we talking about this in an STD list? Bat love life. That's why. These creatures aren't exactly the prudes of the animal kingdom. They're all about that up-close and personal action, especially before they hibernate. It's like a bat version of a speed dating event. But instead of phone numbers, they're spreading this gnarly fungus. Who knew bats had it so rough? Sleep tight, little guys. And maybe invest in some fungal repellent, huh? Number 3. Ants. This one, while also not an STD, is straight out of a horror movie and too bizarre to pass up. We're about to enter the world of ants. And it's not the hard-working and team spirit kind of story you'd expect. No, we're talking about ants getting their tiny minds hijacked. Ever heard of the zombie ant fungus? Officially, it's called Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. But who can even pronounce that? This fungus is the stuff of nightmares, and ants are its unfortunate victims. When a spore from this fungus lands on an ant, it starts to grow inside the ant's body. But this isn't your typical infection. Oh no. This fungus plays dirty. It gets inside the ant and starts hijacking its brain. Yep, we've got zombie ants walking around. Now, the ant, under the fungus's spell, does something straight out of a horror movie. It climbs up to the underside of a leaf and latches on like its life depends on it. Why the underside of a leaf, you ask? Because it's the perfect spot for the fungus to grow and spread its spores. But wait, there's more. The fungus is so smart that it even controls the time of day when the ant does this grip. It's usually around high noon, when the conditions are just right for the fungus. Here comes the grand finale. The fungus grows inside the ant and sprouts right out of its head. Yeah, no kidding. It bursts out like it's saying surprise, and starts shooting spores everywhere, and the cycle of terror continues. These spores rain down, ready to turn more ants into zombies. Number 2. Guppies. Turns out guppies have a bit of a scandal going on. Guppies can get infected with a nasty parasite that is an STD. These STDs often unalive them. But here's where it gets interesting. Instead of just accepting their fate, guppies have started to fight back. These tiny guys are waging a full-blown war against STDs. Male guppies are like the cool kids of the sea, sporting flashy colors to woo the ladies. But those bright colors are also babe magnets for parasites. So, what do guppies do? They get smart. In areas with a high risk of fishy STDs, male guppies start to go low-key, toning down their bright colors. They also change their mating habits. Usually male guppies are all about the quick, swipe-right approach, always chasing after the next match. But when STDs are lurking in the waters, they hit the brakes. Instead of the usual hit-and-run approach, they start investing more in quality time and relationships, being less of a player and more of a thoughtful mate. And scientists say it's working. These smarter dating strategies are actually cutting down their STD rates. It turns out, being responsible in the bedroom, or in this case, the fish tank, pays off in the long run. Number 1. Dolphins. You see, dolphins are pretty, let's say, friendly with each other. 
They'll cozy up to other dolphins, different species, and sometimes even inanimate objects. Talk about not having a type. But all this socializing in the sea has a downside. These guys can end up with some pretty bizarre health issues. Think of it like getting a really bad case of sea pimples, but, you know, in places you really don't want them. What's worse, these aren't just your run-of-the-mill blemishes. We're talking about big, uncomfortable lumps that can make even swimming a real hassle. So, the next time you see a dolphin smiling, remember that it might be hiding a dark secret under the water. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.